best thing to do is to prop up the weapon or suspend it, like if you're painting in a garage, uh, you know, obviously you want to do it in a well-ventilated area. You can hang it from, uh, from like the trigger guard or the front sight tire with a loop of string so that you can paint 360 degrees around the rifle. If you can't suspend the gun, which is preferable, the best thing to do is to prop it up so you can move around and you can paint both sides, the top, and a little bit of the underbody. The biggest mistake you're going to make is trying to do a solid coat, your first coat. You don't want to do that. You want to go extremely light and just, just barely a dusting for your first coat. That paint's going to dry and now it's going to give it uh, give the next coat something to bite into, something to hold on to. If you just go real heavy stream your first coat, it's going to flake off. It's not going to look very good. It's going to take longer to cure and dry and allow you to move on with your project. So you want to go very light. What I generally do is I hold it about 12 inches away from the gun and I start pressing the paint or the button on the paint before I hit the gun. So one nice even coat. You see here, it's a little bit green, but it's not solid green. That's a very light coat. We don't want to go much heavier than that, right? So we're just going to give a nice even coat the whole way around the gun, just going very, very light. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to bake that first coat on after we go light for that first, that first time around. All right, now that we have our base coat on the rifle, we're gonna let it sit here in the sun for about 15 minutes. It's still extremely tacky, so I can't handle it. I'm just gonna let it sit here and dry in the sun and the cool breeze that's going by. After about 15 minutes, I'll just take it, get a little touch, make sure that it's safe to handle. It's not gonna smear fingerprints on the paint. I'm gonna let it sit there, and then once it's, it's sufficiently dry that I can pick it up, I'm gonna take it inside, I'm gonna bake it in my oven. All right, so here's the last coat of the base. Just hitting all the uh, dot in the I's and crossing the T's. It is slightly raining outside. I picked the perfect day. Alright, we're all done with baking on our three coats of olive drab. Uh, the color that's going to be used the least in the pattern is going to be the color that we go with first. So since we went with green, when we're done taping and masking off uh, the rest of the gun for the pattern, it's going to be a little bit of green when it's all said and done. All right? So the color that's going to be the most prevalent will be the last color of paint that we use. So what we can do to accomplish your pattern is we can use different things, different forms of cordage to uh, create different size stripes on the gun. All right, so here's just a little bungee cord. What I can do with the bungee cord is I can hook it on the gun and I can just wrap it around the rifle like this, okay? So what that's gonna do is when I paint over it with the next, uh, next color of paint, it's gonna mask it and keep the paint from going where the cord is. So once it's all dry and cured, I pull off the bungee and it'll be olive drab stripes underneath it, right? So that's one technique is using bungee cords. 
which is uh, very quick and easy. I need these longer cords. I can actually stretch this pretty far across the gun. I can use a heavier, thicker cord. That's gonna make, obviously, a wider line or uh, stripe across the gun. All right, if I don't wanna use bungee cords, which is pretty much the low down, dirty way of doing it, what I can use is I can use the good old classic parachute cord, and that's gonna create a nice thin line uh, or stripe when I pull the cord off after the paint's dry. I can also take the thin cords out of the center of the parachute cord and then create kind of like a pinstripe pattern with it also, right? So parachute cord is useful for that. This is a decoy line, it's braided decoy line. Uh, it's a couple hundred feet or something. There's a 200 feet of this shit. It's only a couple bucks at like Bass Pro or Cabela's or whatever. I like, I keep this in my ruck because it's really useful and it's really cheap and you're not spending $7 for 100 feet of a parachute cord. So I pretty much treat this as disposable cordage that actually is pretty quite strong, right? So I can also wrap that around in random patterns and create that pinstripe using the decoy line. Lastly, my favorite is to use a uh, juke cord, like this stuff here, this burlap juke type cord. Uh, you can get it at craft shops. People use it to tie bushes back in their garden. Uh, it's cheap and you can see there's like this little fray fiber stuff coming out of it that when you paint over, it's not a real crisp line, it's more of a blended line and it melts in with itself very well. So this is gonna be the stuff that we use the most of when painting this rifle. Here. How do you actually get the stripe then, like a tiger stripe, once you wrap it like that? The cord is going to catch paint. All right, so we use that uh, a jute gardening cord, whatever the hell it's called, right? Uh, that we got from Walmart or Home Depot. We tied it around the gun, and that's going to create the stripe pattern, right? So wherever the cord is, there's going to be a thin green stripe after we're all done, right? We're going to move on to the next color, which is uh, the Luma Hide and Coyote Brown. So the Coyote Brown is going to be the next color. Once uh, we're finished painting the gun Coyote, we're going to put it back in the oven, bake it some more, and then we're going to add another length of cord, probably some more of this stuff and maybe uh, thicker lines because we want more browns and tans in the design. So we might use those bungee cords which will create wider uh, stripes. <laughs> if I had that tripod, I could have it for about five minutes before I paint it. Like, oh my god, it's black. Conflict of nature. Check the weather report before we started this shit today. No. Seriously? No. Nate, why are we in the basement? Because it's rainy. Somebody did not check the weather report. Yeah, that lightens up a little bit. Mm -hmm. 